very happy new year to all my friends, subscribers and my family as well. Um, I hope you all had a good time. Uh, the new year uh, looks to be in, uh, an interesting one for me anyhow uh, with regards to what I'm going to be doing. Um, I've given a lot of thought and I get an awful lot of questions as I do various things. So I've decided to do a sort of another series if you like of uh, beginner's guides like for example a beginner's guide to turning a goblet and, and try and make it more of a uh, tutorial uh, from my perspective so that the new turners out there can get an idea to start them off how to do various projects uh, and it is only my view, it's the way I do it and I'll try and give as many alternatives if not actually show every alternative in use um, for example you could use this tool or these other three tools to do this job I prefer to do it this way to give them an idea of, of, of what is possible and uh, that's what I intend to do over the coming 12 months. Okay, what I'm going to do uh, to kick off this uh, sort of series, the beginner's guide if you like, um, is going to be a goblet. I, mean, I love making goblets as well as boxes um, and bowls, but goblets I think are my favourite. Um, and there are an awful lot of different ways of doing them, so uh, I'm going to do it one specific way. And through the journey of the, of the blank up until the finished object, um, I'll try and mention as many options as you use. So I hope you enjoy it and uh, once again Happy New Year to everybody. And uh, So I've got a piece of cherry which um, I cut down uh, back in August of uh, last year, 2013. I've found the approximate centre and I use a little piece of plastic the old centre finder and I draw loads of lines because it's in a regular circle, it's at a regular circumference and that gives me an approximate centre. And then with a punch I just punch two location holes, literally um, place your uh, centre and use a rubber mallet and just bang it in and place that into your spindle, bring up your tailstock, lock it off and advance the quill into the hole. Okay. So that gives a nice firm seating. Don't forget to lock your quill down. So now we're going to uh, turn it down to round and to, to do that I'll be using a roughing gouge which I've freshly touched up on the grinder. several ways to hollow out. Um, if you're using, you see the thing is, the reason I'm not using a spindle steady is very few people when they start out turning are going to get a spindle steady because it's not something which is essential. So I'm going to try and produce this goblet with what I would term as the basic sort of tools that you would start off with. Um, again when you start to hollow the bowl part of the goblet there are several methods to employ. You can either use um, something like this which is just a drill bit which I put into epoxied into a handle um, to make your depth cut and make a hole and then you will um, what they call back hollow from that hole to make the inside of the bowl. You can either do that if you have a Jacobs chuck which is a chuck with a Morse taper to fit your tailstock like so you can put the drill bit into that and then advance your tailstock to create the depth hole again. Or you can just plunge in with your uh, spindle gouge to make a hole to the depth you want and then hollow. You can also use a carbide cutter tool like so when you've started off the hole there you can do it with a tool like that. You can also use a scraper. You can also use a skew chisel. So in actual fact you can use virtually any tool that you have in your armory to hollow out that bowl. Anyhow, those are all the different ways you can hollow out a goblet. The one I'm going to use is the back hollowing method and I'm going to use the tip of a skew chisel just to get the centre and then 
I'm going to use a, um, a 3 8 spindle gouge just to go in. Now this has to be smack on centre for this operation. Now again everything has to be light cuts because we have no support along the length of the blank apart from the jaws. And then you feed it in and then we can start to hollow. Now I'm going to carry on with this 3 8 spindle gouge for now. Place in and move out. All I like to do is to complete the inside of the bowl and sand it to the required grit, in this case it will be 600 grit, and give it the coating, the final coating. So the inside of the bowl and the edge will be complete. Um, so now we're at the stage where I put the um, sanding sealer mix on and a little bit of um, board just across your bedways just protects them from all the rubbish that you could possibly spill on there. Not essential but I like to do it. And apply the sealer to the inside and the edge of the bowl. And what the sanding sealer mix does, it raises the grain slightly, which then when it dries, an even coating on so you get no ridges, and then when it dries, uh, which takes about five minutes, you just denib um, the surface for the raised grain. You can use either wire wool, 000 wire wool, uh, or the last grit of abrasive that you use to sand the project and in this case it was 600 so I'll denib it with 600. Put another coat on and then that seals it. When that dries denib that as well and then you're ready to put your wax coating on or whatever finish you desire to put on. I'm going to put the wax on now, apply it to the surface and just work it in technical term is burning. So now I've applied the two coats and this is just the final buffing. Two coats of wax have been applied. And this goblet and any goblet that I do uh, and finish with a wax finish is not suitable for actually using as a drinking vessel. It is purely for decoration and ornamental value. You can get plastic coatings and various other coatings that if you wish to use it as a drinking vessel um, then you apply those and it will give a lot more resistance to moisture and to the liquid you're using. There we go and that, that is the inside and the rim of the bowl. Okay, so now we're at the level where we're going to start to shape the bowl and start to bring it down to the stem. No, I'm not going to do any fancy work, just get the basic shape and what I'm using here is a three quarter inch shallow fluted spindle gouge.
of having a thicker stem is that you don't need to support it with your fingers because it's quite thick enough itself because normally when I'm doing a stem and well, most people do thin stem goblets you're doing this, you're supporting the work you're using let's say a skew chisel to go down now all these things you know, it, it, it's not because we're brilliant, it's purely and simply that we've been doing it a while and we've practiced, an awful lot of practice, and also made a lot of mistakes. So, that's how you learn. So don't worry about doing those things, this is just to show you that you can get a very nice, presentable goblet, which will give you the confidence to then experiment with different forms of doing it. Now, there are two ways of forming your base. You can either, which I prefer, is the concave profile, or indeed you can have a convex profile, but I just feel that looks a little bit bulky. That's my own personal opinion. Now, in actual fact, the, um, the bowl is a little bit uh, large for such a short stem, but as I say, for the interest of this video, we're not after design awards, just to give the beginners a starting point. Starting to is going in at an angle, cutting in, undercutting it. And I should go down to about there and then I can sand up everything and finish it. So what I'll do now is go through the grits and I'll come back when I'm putting the finishing touch to it of the wax. Okay, so I've um, sanded it down to 600. Uh, two coats of sanding sealer mix, cut that back, put one coat of wax on and I'm just about to put the final coat of wax on, the second coat. So just spread it evenly and just keep working your paper towel around the piece. And as, as I've said in previous videos, you know when it's gone, um, it's gone off as it were, because it's like moving your toe across a piece of glass and just a fresh piece and just keep working it in and I reiterate this this goblet is not going to win any design awards to hopefully give confidence to the new turners that it is a relatively simple operation to produce a very acceptable looking goblet uh, with a minimum of effort and the minimum of tools. So there is the finished piece and uh, all that remains to do now is to part him off. Now to do that we remove the tailstock completely and then you don't have to do it with a thin parting tool, you can do it with a diamond parting tool or indeed a skew chisel if you so wish and as you can see it's running quite smoothly bit of a relief cut and part him off your goblet and the little nub on the bottom you can take that off with a piece of sandpaper or you can use a skew chisel to get that little nub off whichever way you feel comfortable really and then as I said a little bit of hand sanding under there with a palm sander and the job is done so your goblet is complete now 
the inside is lovely and smooth, no marking from the um, tailstock because of the mouse pad being there. As I say, it's not going to win any design awards, but it's a nice goblet with regards to the fact it's very simple to produce and as you get more experienced, I mean there for example the stem is a little bit thick at the bottom compared to the top, it's not exactly even um, and it's a bit stubby really but it doesn't matter, it's a goblet and you've done it and that's the main thing and then when you get confidence in doing it and you use various methods for holding and various methods for doing your uh, your stems etc then you can start experimenting well I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope it has been of some use to you um, thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe cheers now